Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras, here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Well, after three days of protests and calls to nix a proposed tax measure, Christian religious leaders have reopened the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The church, known by many as the holiest site in Christianity, opened up its doors at 4 a.m. this morning. A few minutes later, a large group of pilgrims entered the church. Thousands of tourists had been forced to pray outside the church for the last three days, and church leaders only decided to reopen the site after Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and government officials announced that they would be suspending the tax collection. They further announced that they would not be going through the proposed property bill. Finally, the government also announced that they would be forming a committee headed by Regional Cooperation Minister Tzachi Negbi, that would actively work with church leaders on their concerns regarding the plans to tax commercial properties owned by the church in Jerusalem. According to Prime Minister Netanyahu, the Jerusalem municipality would suspend tax collection for now, but that the $180 million in property taxes from commercial holdings that the church owes must still be paid back. Only houses of worship will remain exempt. It looks like the White House is getting the ball rolling on transferring the United States Embassy to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv. An American delegation is set to land in Israel next week to coordinate the move. The delegation is expected to consist of lawyers, logistical staff, diplomats, and engineers who will together lay the groundwork for the country's embassy to be moved to a consular affairs building in southern Jerusalem. The State Department is planning the official move for May 14th, just in time to coincide with Israel's 70th Independence Day. But because the process will take much more time, for now, the U.S. will be converting a consulate building in Jerusalem's residential Arnona neighborhood as a temporary solution. Officials initially said it would take six years to construct a new embassy, but the White House has moved up the date by promising to simply convert the current Jerusalem compound. The United States originally asked Jerusalem to provide a large plot of land to build a new embassy, but we are told that there just wasn't any plot in Jerusalem meeting United States security requirements. The White House had reportedly been seeking a 25-acre plot with no other buildings or factories in the immediate vicinity. Now, the U.S. is expected to demolish the former diplomat hotel located next to the Jerusalem consulate and build a new embassy in its place. A wave of events is now crashing against top White House aide and Trump's son-in-law Jared Kushner this week, as the White House reports that Kushner's security clearance has now been downgraded. This comes at the heels of Kushner's communications director and former Hollywood PR executive Josh Raffel stepping down for, quote, family obligations in New York. The downgrade in clearance could be reversed by President Trump, but the president has already indicated that he will not interfere with the clearance process. Further, it's possible that the vetting process actually found a potential for leaks. As the news of Kushner's downgrade broke, so did a report seeming to reveal that Officials from at least four different countries, Israel, the United Arab Emirates, China, and Mexico, saw opportunities to manipulate United States policy by taking advantage of Kushner's complicated business dealings, financial difficulties, and naivete in foreign policy. Whatever the reason, unless something changes, Kushner will now only have access to the lesser secret status documents, as opposed to also seeing top secret compartmented documents. An IDF position in the Central West Bank was fired upon last night, there have been no reports of injuries or damage. According to the military, troops are searching the area for the perpetrator or perpetrators and have already found a number of shells just outside the post of al north of Jerusalem. This comes just as Israel begins to close its borders with the West Bank and Gaza for the holiday of Purim, until Saturday. Holidays are seen as a time of heightened tensions, especially now following recent United States decisions in Jerusalem including the dropping of aid for UNRWA, recognizing the capital of Israel as Jerusalem, and promising to move the embassy in kind on Israel's Independence Day. Newly released Israeli satellite images appear to show an Iranian base with the capability of housing rockets within range of Israel. The base also looks the same as an IRGC base destroyed by Israel late last year. This one is just 8 kilometers or 5 miles from Damascus, in an area known as Jabal al-Sharqi. Though Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman downplayed the issue as nothing new, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu has long been warning of increased Iranian entrenchment in Syria and overall aggression in the Middle East. At a February securities conference, Netanyahu said, quote, Israel will not allow Iran's regime to put a noose of terror around our neck, and that Israel will act if necessary and without hesitation, both against Iranian proxies like Hezbollah as well as Iran itself. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.